On this episode of Exactly How, we show you how to be a passive commercial real estate investor, how to get high returns without doing a lot of work, and how to find the right people to invest in on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast-paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Welcome to the Connected Investors Podcast, Exactly How. During this episode, you're going to discover exactly how to be an expert in passive commercial real estate investing. For those of you who are new, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and the CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com. And today we have the privilege to learn from a guy that was able to make the leap from single family into commercial and multifamily properties. And he now owns over 1,300 units. He even wrote a book called Passive Investing in Commercial Real Estate, which I'll make sure you have a link to as well. Prior to his career as an innovative multifamily investor, he was an engineer and a manager. And all that changed when he got to know, when he, got to, when he started to understand the high cost of college and education for his kids, he had to do something else. He had to make some money, so he found real estate. I bet your story is probably semi-similar. I would describe our guest as a very persistent and analytical. His name is James, and today he's going to explain exactly how to passively invest in commercial real estate. James, thank you so very much for taking the time to speak with us. Hey, Ross. Happy to be here. I mean, um, happy to add value to your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who are, uh, who are just listening to this uh, on a podcast, we also have the YouTube show. You're going to want to make sure to go to uh, YouTube and find the Connected Investors channel. And it looks, are you sitting outside in front of your house there, James? Yeah, this is my patio in Austin, oh, is, Texas. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, we're here at, we're here at Connected Investors and uh, it's nice to be able to connect with you. You're in uh, Austin. We're in Wilmington, North Carolina. So Great. We have a really fun show here. I'm really excited about this one. And for everyone that's new, what makes the Exactly How Financial Freedom podcast different is every show comes with a detailed action plan. So we're going to pull all of the steps, all of the knowledge out of our guest's head, and we're going to put it in a detailed action plan for you. So if you're driving, you don't have to worry about taking notes. You're just going to want to visit exactlyhow.com to get access to everything. In addition to the show notes and the takeaways and all the resources um, and some of the gifts that James is going to uh, be giving you throughout this uh, the show here, you can also throw your name in the hat to win our $3,000 pre-MLS software that gives you access to every deal type you need to be a real estate investor. Vacants, pre-foreclosures, foreclosures, shadow inventory, zombie properties, for sale by owners, expired listings, everything in one beautiful, easy to use interface, a $3,000 value. And one of our guests, one of the individuals on this line are going to win it for free. All you have to do is visit exactlyhow.com to throw your name into the hat. And we're even going to announce a winner on the show in just a few moments. So if you're watching this live, you can go to exactlyhow.com right now, throw your name into the hat, and maybe you'll be the lucky winner. So before we jump in here and really dig into this seemingly complex topic, can you just explain to me, James, what, what passive investing in commercial means, like the passive element? What does that mean to you? So passive investment fundamentally means that you are not active, right? Of course, right? But yeah. if passive means uh, you basically, you know, give um, your money to someone else who's considered, who called the sponsor and that's it, right? You choose the sponsor, you give the money and you wait for the cash flow to come in on a monthly basis. You are not doing any work on the property. You are not liable on any of the loans. You are not even visiting the property. You're basically looking at the sponsor and what is he offering on the deal that he's bringing in and you believe in the deal. You, want, you tell him you want to invest and you send him the money and maybe after one or two months, he close on the deal and maybe after a few months, he starts sending you a cash flow based on the operation of that property. So great. So your investment that you're making, you're using your own money for this type of passive investing. Correct. And Correct. your money is secured by the by the real estate yeah you are you are backed by the uh, by the real estate you you fundamentally owns the uh, uh, portion of the real estate right so if you are buying your own house mm 
you own the entire equity, right? Let's say you're putting 20, 25% of equity, you own 100%. But if you invest passively with someone else, you own probably one or 2% of that deal, right? Because everything else is shared by everybody else. But you basically own the real estate. So, so what happened is high net worth people, people are busy, you know, doctors, lawyers, engineers, business people. I mean, we are busy with other things, right? Even there's a lot of single family uh, investors who are busy flipping houses, right? But they have tons of money right now. I mean, they don't have time to put that money into work. They can put into uh, syndication as, as a passive investors and make that money work, right? Um, so that is yeah. very, very suitable for that kind of people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's no better place really to put your money than, than real estate. And it's, it's really the full circle, right? One of my mentors, he was, uh, you know, he still is, he's a billionaire. And he said, Ross, there's only two problems where you're going to get the money. And then the bigger problem is where you're going to spend or invest your money, right? At first, when you're starting, you're like, I need money, I need money. And then all of a sudden things start working. And you're like, what do I do with all this money? And that's why passive investing is a very uh, you know, exciting topic right now. So right. Earlier, James, when we were talking, you broke it down into basically three steps, the networking, the syndication, mm -hmm. and the finding the right sponsor. And we're going to kind of structure the show around that. So let's just jump right into uh, to networking. When you say you have to network, what does that really mean uh, in the context of this show? Well, network means go out of your cycle or, or your circle of friends and uh, family and go and go to meetups, right? Uh, or go to bigger pockets and look for, you know, syndication or passive investing. Just learn what is it about, right? So once you do that, you're going to be really, really learning, you know, how people are doing it, uh, you know, who are the sponsors, you know, what are the deals they're buying, where are they focusing on, and what are the aspects that, uh, you know, any other passive investors will look for. So that's, that's what I mean so, by networking. I mean, the networking to me really seems like finding the deals because it seems like, you kind of have to be in the know to find these to find these individuals. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's not really finding the deal, but finding the right sponsor, right? So, because always the passive investors, you have to bet on the on the jockey, not on the horse, right? So you have to find that the best jockey out there by networking. There you go. That's a, that's a really good point. Now let me just ask one one question because just a few episodes ago we did a uh, we told people exactly how to become a private lender. Mm -hmm. Right. And how does passive commercial real estate investing, how is that different than being a private, uh, a private lender? Or is it essentially the same thing? No, they're absolutely not the same thing. Private lender is basically you are lending as a lender, right? So you are basically giving money in the hope of certain interest being given to you. You don't, you don't own the equity of the deal, right? You, pro you are basically a second lien on that deal, right? So mm -hmm. because... Well, when you are when you're investing as a passive investor in a syndicated deal, you basically own the equity. You are the first guy who's right. You, you are part of the, the first guy. Right. And all the tax benefit of a real estate investment is being realized by that by this equity investors, including the passive investors. So you get a lot of benefit in terms of tax and in terms of owning part of the property and whatever appreciation that's being generated by that equity is going to be realized by the equity investors, not by the lenders. Lenders is a fixed rate. It's a promise to pay, right? So, so your property might go from 1 million to 5 million, but you have just landed, you just land, you just borrowed only 1 million, right? So whereas private equity, they have that upside of 4 million. They're going to get that $4 million of upside plus the tax benefit. So it's definitely different. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for breaking that down. So we talked a little bit about, uh, a little bit about networking, but um, other than using, you know, online social networking sites like connected investors or stuff like that, or going to local meetups, uh -huh. are there any other resources that you can, um, or ways that you can find these individuals, these sponsors, which are people that basically if we'll talk about in a second, but are there any other ways to kind of find those people you, you can think of? Well, I mean, first of all, it's meetups. You know, if you go to different meetups, if you go to meetup.com, you just type, you know, multifamily meetup, right? Then you yeah. go multifamily. I mean, especially if you want to look at multifamily, which is a hugely popular asset class right now in terms of commercial. Second is just go to Facebook. If you type uh, multifamily investors group, which is a group that I run, we have like 1,700 people right now. There's oh, wow. a lot of people who are active in multifamily, a lot of passive active investors as well. And they come in and, and join as well. I mean, third is, of course, listen to podcasts. There's a lot of podcasts being done. Yeah. Uh, of course you have to look for podcasts that is, uh, that there's real operators coming into the, to the, to be the guest, right? Like, like I, I have a podcast called achieve wealth through value at real estate investing, where I just primarily uh, focus on commercial 
real estate operators. So these are the people who put deals together. Oh, gotcha. Right? That's yeah, really so, you, so you can find these people and uh, you can uh, get them, just network with them and you know, be in their passive investment list. You, know, tell, you have to connect with them, tell them, hey, put me into your distribution list when the deal comes in, right? So they'll put you in whenever a deal comes in. You can just see what kind of deal they're doing, what are the ex- how are they explaining the deal, what's the business plan, and you know, talk to their passive investors, right? So throughout all this process, you, know, you can find the 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 operator who's doing very well and uh, yeah. who's going to be a best fit for you. Yeah, we'll talk about the uh, the sponsor and the operator in a second. Uh, mm-hmm. What about these online portals that I'm seeing pop up all over the place? Um, um, so online crowdfunding, port- crowdfunding portals or um, like realty share and crowdfunding and all that. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Is there? Uh, you know, patch of land, you know, there's, there's all these different sites out there that, that seem like, uh, or what is that? Hi, um, man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but there's a, there's a big one out there. I get emails all the time about new commercial <laughs> deals that I can, I can throw money into. Sure, sure. Um, so I can explain to you. So but the money seems a little more fixed. It always yeah, seems like more or less I'm, I'm a lender, not really a partner. They can do a lender part of it or they can fundrise. Do fundrise is what I was fundrise. thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they do is, Platform like Fundrise or crowdfunding or Realty Share work with operators like us who finds deal and who operate deal and they they have a platform where they group up all the private investors and the private investors can invest a very small amount of money and that's called a crowdfunding platform, which is another way of in, investing passively. Uh, but the thing is, there's no real relationship between the, the guy who controls the, op, the operation or the deal, which is the operator versus the private investor out there, right? You are basically having a relationship with this middleman, right? Uh, who's mm-hmm. like grouping all together and they're doing all their tax forms. You can distribute your risk, but you are basically not uh, established relationship with this, uh, you know, uh, private sponsors, right? So it's a lot of private sponsors out there. You just have to go and look for them and they are really good and they give you the best bang for your buck because when, they're only, when, they're, when there's a middleman, you always have to pay them too, right? I mean, including the operators and also the private investors. Somebody's paying something, right? So it's management fee, there's administration fee, all kind of fees in between. Um, so they bring that kind of value in terms of diversification and you can invest small and you don't have to worry about who are you investing with. They try to vet the operators, but there are a lot of good operators out there too where you can go and establish relationship and they're available through Facebook, Meetup and all that. Just go and do it. Yeah. Well, great. That was step one. Let's talk about step two, the syndication. Mm-hmm. First off, what is yeah? What does syndication mean? So syndication is a process where, whenever a person you know um, raise money from private investors, uh, and you know the money is going to be, the profit is going to be generated by that person, which is I call a sponsor. The sponsor is going to generate a profit through his own effort, mm-hmm. and he's raising money from private investor. That is called a syndication, right? So syndication has been there for a very long time, right? So for example, whenever we take a plane. You know, we can't pay for the whole plane, right? So we we actually buying a ticket out of like 300 people there in a big plane and we're just paying a small amount of money and we're getting the benefit of flying like a private jet, right? So <laughs> unless you own a private jet, then you, there's no syndication, right? But that's actually how Richard Richard Branson got into uh, into his, his airline. <laughs> he pulled a bunch of people together to get a private jet and said, hey, I'm going to start an airline. Oh, so, cool. <laughs> yeah. But basically, it's uh, synonymous to that, right? You basically put your, a small amount of money for a large deal mm-hmm. and you get the benefit of the large deal, right? So syndication is basically that process where a sponsor will go and find a deal and finance the deal and you raise money from private investors and the private investors get to invest a small amount of money, like 100000 200000 50000 to be part of that big deal, right? Um, that is syndication. And they become, the private investor become passive because the general partner or the sponsor are the one who's controlling the whole deal. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're pulling all this money together, however they're doing it. And they're getting a big chunk of the upside for pulling it all together. Correct. So. Correct. Looking for a private money partner to fund your flips or rentals? Go direct to the source. PrivateLenders.com. A free marketplace that instantly matches you with up to five private money lenders. Ready, willing, and able to fund your deals. If you're paying big profit shares or high rates, visit privatelenders.com and save thousands by having non-bank lenders compete to be your funding partner. See who's lending in your town at privatelenders.com. Absolutely. absolutely. That's great. I think the most important part of this uh, 
important part of this whole episode. And I don't want to jump off the syndication step, but mm -hmm. you know, to me, it's once, once you've found the sponsor, um, the syndication is kind of taken care of. Mm -hmm. We're not teaching how to do the syndication right now. That could be another podcast. We're just yeah. saying there's a syndication element. You throw your money in the pot. They go and buy this great piece of commercial real estate. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make it very simple. There's a lot of uh, technical technicality in syndication. There's a lot of lawyer's document. There's a lot of uh, qualification of investors and a lot of regulations that the SEC put on top of all the syndication to make sure that people are doing it legally, right? So do they have to do a private placement to be able yeah, to, do, to do syndication? Yeah, okay. you, you need some kind of private placement uh, memorandum or called PPM, which is basically prepared by the SEC lawyers. Uh, and that is what been given to the passive investors to know what is the deal about. Great, great. So let's talk about finding the sponsor because this mm -hmm. is really the make or break. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a good deal can be killed by a bad person. Absolutely. And when you're, when you're going online, I'll tell you this, we, uh, because we have our private, uh, private funding portal, privatelenders.com, we get so many lenders that want to be in our network that are scam artists. Mm -hmm. And we spend so much time verifying investors to make sure they're real. And people that come from uh, you know, some of these free online sites are the scariest a lot of times. So they tell you what you want to hear um, and then they, they don't follow through. So mm -hmm. let's talk about finding the sponsor and also vetting the sponsor because that's okay. pretty much the make or break. Yeah, finding the sponsors I mentioned, you can go to you know, Facebook groups, listen to podcasts and they, you know, usually the host... You know, there are some podcasts, as I mentioned, the one I have, and there's a few other podcasts which bring in operators, right? But primarily going to meetups and finding them, uh, they are usually in the meetups and uh, they are, you, you, can, you can talk to people and find out, you know, who they are and all that, right? So, but vetting sponsors is more tricky, right? Because now you do not know who they are, especially if you're investing with them first time, right? Even if you invest with the first time, you wouldn't know how they react to problems, only after like a few years, you already know like, okay, this is how it's actually working. How This is how this person is doing, right? So, so the best way for me uh, to vet a sponsor is just try to get people who have invested with that person before this and talk to them and find out, hey, how is this person communicating to you? Because a lot of times things doesn't go well all the time, right? But the sponsor need to communicate that to the passive investors because passive investors have no control, right? Uh, very, very, or very limited control. And uh, a good uh, sponsor would not only give good returns, uh, will also communicate bad news, will also communicate what is he doing to mitigate any risk that's uh, popping up rather than just saying all good and be done or don't communicate at all, right? So, so the only way to find that data is to talk to people that already been investing with them and you can find them in the meetups or any other places, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the best way to tell what's going to happen in the future is to see how they've operated in the past. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And there are some new bees as well. Like when I started first time itself, I already had a lot of good track record from my single family homes, but I was able to build that credibility. Um, but there are a lot of people who are starting new, right? And you always want to make sure that the team, right? The partner or the person who's teaching that person or uh, whoever the partner is for that new person, you know, it's a very strong person, right? And uh, it's always best to invest with people who are experienced. Um, but just make sure you do your due diligence in terms of, uh, you know, finding from other people on how this person has performed. Yeah. Is there any way to see, uh, you know, maybe through some data, mm -hmm. uh, deals like this that have been done? Is there anything that's like publicly recorded? I know these are private pl placement memorandums, but is there anything that the data dorks can kind of dig into to find uh, deals that have been done like this? No, no, it's very, very private and it's very tricky, right? Because you do not know whether the deal is making money or the sponsor is moving money, right? So you can pay out to passive investors even from capital reserve, right? So you may not, the property might not be making money, but the, sometimes the, the passive investors think, oh, I'm getting money, I'm getting my preferred return, I'm getting 8%, I'm happy, right? But actually that 8%, it's not really the property making money, right? But there may be capital money that is being reserved because a lot of sponsors, I mean, a lot of deals, they raise millions of dollars just for CapEx, right? And sometimes they want to keep on doing deals and sometimes they give this false perception to this passive investor saying that the deal is doing pretty well, right? And it's always hard for passive investors because they, they don't really know how to read the financials, right? So even though I send you the financial, how do you read it, right? You can see operating income, you can see operating expense, you have a net operating income, but you do not know what is the mortgage. You do not know what is the other fees involved, right? To see whether the deal is really, really making money. So it's a bit tricky to really know that. 
Yeah. Well, I think you're, you know, in the beginning of the podcast here, I described you as persistent and analytical. Uh huh. And that is the, uh, <laughs> you would be a really annoying investor to have an, on a deal. Yeah. That's why I don't invest. You know all the numbers and you're persistent. <laughs> and you're, uh, you know, yeah, you're going to dig yeah. in, but you'd be a great person to have on, on the team. And I'm oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. We, yeah, we work really hard to make sure that we turn around our properties very quickly. Yeah, we do a lot of value add deals, which makes the most money, but it's also slightly higher risk compared to the, the usual deal, right? But because of our skill and operational expertise and we are vertically integrated, we have property management, asset management, you know, everything in one place. You know, we, there's one neck to choke. So we are very, very accountable for our deals. Yeah, well, I mean, to get up to 1,300 units after uh, you were about 13 single family properties before you moved uh-huh. into multifamily. So yeah. it's, it's always great to make, make the jump if you can. Because oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's a lot of hard work too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, at the, under, at the other end of this, the, uh, the tunnel there, uh-huh. there's, a, there's a fantastic retirement. Absolutely. 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 So yeah. you do make a lot of money. I mean, as long as you execute the business plan correctly and, you know, um, that's how we have uh, investors trusting us, right? Uh, because of the consistency. Yeah. Executing. Yeah. Well, you know, I just realized I forgot to announce our winner. I was so excited about this, this whole syndication uh, concept here. So the winner of the pre MLS software for this episode, they went to exactlyhow.com. They threw their name in the hat. Now they're going to get a $3,000 software that shows them all the deals in their area. And they can actually see all of the property flips that are happening in their area. See the profit made on the property, property flips. They can see all the landlords, all of the wholesalers, all the activity happening in your market is Noah Gray. Noah, congratulations. <laughs> I'll be reaching out to you. Thank you so much for being a listener of the show. So let me ask you this really important question here, uh, James. What do you think your life would be like if you never made the jump into real estate? I think life would be boring. I mean, uh, I was an electrical engineer. I'm in a senior manager role, you know, 22 years in corporate life. You know, I mean, you can work. I mean, for me, I I need a lot of creative juice. I need things to be spiced up. And if you realize a lot of work uh, after some times where... Other than startup mode or, or research, you know, where you're doing a lot of new things every day, you know, 90% of the companies out there or on unemployment, it's pretty boring, right? Because you're doing the same thing over and over again, right? Because a lot of companies make profit by doing the same thing over and over again, right? So like even if you look at Google, right? Not every, maybe, I think maybe like 60 or 70% of Google is doing new things, right? But <laughs> 70 or eight, the rest of the company are doing Maintaining Google itself, right? Which can be pretty boring, right? But you can say you work in Google, but it could be a boring job, right? So, but it also depends on the person's personality, right? Not everybody mind doing that job, right? Maybe some people love that same thing daily because they can predict their life every day. They can go back on time. They know they have a job. They know their platform is running and all that. But like for me, my personality is I need to see something new. I need to have that creative juice and, and you need to solve problems, right? And really, I really, really love solving problems. And that's part of the engineering mindset of it. And persistent in solving problem. And when you solve the problem, the happiness that you get from it, that's the, that is the creative juice that I look for. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny that you say that because in the previous episode, we were just talking about, you know, real estate investing is uh, no matter where you are, it's just problem solving. Yeah, absolutely. You make money by solving problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> Directly related to the amount of, of conflict or problems that you're able to, to creatively solve. And, you know, James, you're a great uh, t- testament to that right here. So absolutely. Thanks, for, uh, thanks for sharing that. Do you mind if I do a little bit of uh, rapid fire here? I'm going to ask you some questions, just kind of the absolutely. first thing that comes to your mind. Absolutely. All right. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? Um, f- five. Five. Get up early or stay up late? I'll get up early. How many hours of sleep do you get? Eight, eight hours now. Favorite or most recent book read? Favorite most recent book read? Uh, I would say uh, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, good one. Number Absolutely. one book right here. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, if you could be any superhero, who would it be? Oh, no. No one. No <laughs> one? There you go. Yeah. I'd be myself. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you're, a, you're a real estate investing superhero. You are a superhero. I'm a superhero. We are superhero on our own. Yeah, there you go. Great answer. What, what is something that everyone should do less of? Should do less of uh, stop complaining. The, 
Yeah, can I explain on that? Yeah, please. I think it's, it's important because, uh, I mean, a lot of people who do not want success in life. I mean, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of your in, in, uh, listeners would have been thinking, I want success. But let me tell you, you really do not want success, right? The, uh, a lot of people who really, really successful in life, who really, really require success, they do not want success. There are a lot of people who want success, but the, pers- the people who really, really require or must successful are the really, really one who's really, really successful, right? So it's a huge difference between people who require to success, whether you want to be successful or not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is something everyone should do more of? Should do more of uh, think positive. Think and grow rich. There you go. <laughs> Will people visit Mars in your lifetime? Um, I think so. Bitcoin, bang or bust? Bust. Bust. All right. Thanks so much. It's interesting to, uh, to hear everyone's, everyone's thought on that. Yeah, not, not from real estate perspective. We are so used to brick and mortar and touching things that we invest on, right? So we yeah. probably had the right people to talk about Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, I got, I got a few. So no matter what happens, I'll, uh, I'll be riding the wave one way or another. Just, you got too much money. You have to yeah, invest passively. Well, well, <laughs> I'm buying them for my kids and stuff like that. It'll be a funny gift to give away one day. Who knows? Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Anyway, um, thank you so much for jumping on the show. Sure, Ross. Uh, Happy to be here. Yeah. And for everyone who made it to the end of the show, you are better than the rest. Most people, they don't finish what they start. Only 30% of people finish podcasts that they start listening to. But you made it all the way to the end, which means you finish what you start. You're excited about investing in real estate. You learned a lot from James and I on this show. So all we ask is you comment, like, share, tag someone, let us know. We put a lot of time, energy, and effort into bringing you the best. And all we want is some interaction so we know you're there. So please comment, let us know. I'm so excited for uh, future episodes we have and some of the past episodes at exactlyhow.com. We uh, go over exactly how to build skyscrapers, how to build and invest in hotels, how to be a private lender, how to find private lenders, how to wholesale deals, how to flip deals, the perfect diet for an entrepreneur, all of the things that help you with your wealth, health, and happiness can be found at exactlyhow.com. I'll talk to you on the next show. Bye-bye. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers, and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the Property Marketplace, you'll be able to find, favorite, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund and flip investment properties on the go.